My name is Ray Rios and I work for IDEA. I'm a senior self engineer. I'm in Houston, Texas right now, five o'clock in the morning. So good afternoon to you guys. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Today we're gonna to talk about SQL Diagnostic Manager for SQL Server. It's a monitoring tool 24 seven that allows you to monitor all your instances that you have for SQL Server in your environment. So again, we monitor 24 hours, seven days a week. Uh, we do this without the need of an agent. So we're gonna take a look at the architecture in the next slide. But right now, for what you need to know is we don't need to install any agents on those systems where you have SQL Server. Um, and we can gather all the information from a centralized server that is using some Windows services to gather that information. Now we collect this information in a real time fashion. That means for you, it's whatever you set that to be real time. So some instances you might wanna gather the information every minute because it might be critical and you want that information as fast as possible. Some of the other ones you might buy, you might be able to do at two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, it's up to you. So if you have a, a bunch of instances and depending on the criticality and their locations, there might be many, many different things that you might wanna consider doing either a faster collection or a slower collection because it might not be as crucial. And then the historical information, we keep all of this information in a database, in a repository, that's gonna be a SQL database. And by default, it's gonna be one year, but you can keep that however long you want. So if you want it, uh, you know, 30 days, 60 days, 365, 500, 600, it's up to you. Usually, uh, as a rule of thumb, per instance, per year, is about two to three gigabytes of data. So let's say if you have 10 instances, it will be about, you know, 20 to 30 gigabytes of data if you keep that information for one year. Now with the metrics, we have over 100 different metrics. That includes metrics for the database in the instance, but also metrics from the operating system uh, and metrics as well from the virtual environment if you're running the VMware, the access host, or the Hyper-V from Microsoft. We can gather information from that host and all the virtual machines, and as well from the cloud environment if you're running on Azure, or uh, Amazon RDS. The last thing is the alerts and actions. So every metric has a uh, at least one or two uh, thresholds, and that's going to be critical or warnings. So if usually something goes above that level, we can do something about it. The most common thing is to send an email with all the details about that event. But we can also run corrective actions, meaning that you, let's say if you have a disk that is getting low and is getting into that warning or critical threshold, then you can run something to fix that. And that could be either a PowerShell script, it could be uh, a batch file, it could be a job from SQL, it could be a SQL text also or a SQL command that can try to fix that problem that you have. So let's take a look at the architecture very quick. Like I said earlier, we cover the cloud, physical, and virtual environments. Again, the virtual VMware Hyper-V. Basically, we get the same information from all three of those environments, but in the cloud, we're gonna have metrics that are specific to the cloud, and metrics that are specific to the host and the virtual environment. Right now, version 2008 to 2019, we do have support experimental support, we call it, for 2022, but it's coming very soon to be fully supported. So far, there are no issues with that, and uh, and we are supporting it if you buy it for that version. So from a centralized server, we have some services, like I said earlier, that we collect the information without the need to install anything, and that collection is every six minutes, but you can configure that to whatever you want per instance. With WMI, we gather information about the operating system, your CPU, memory, and disk. With the SQL account, we can gather information about the databases and the instances. Now, all of that information we, kept, we keep in a repository. It's going to be a SQL database. It could be anywhere. As long as it's a standard developer enterprise, it cannot be expressed. We can do express here where we're monitoring. 
Well, we cannot do express here because we got to clean this every so often, in this case, every 365 days. And that is done with a job which is not supported in express. We got consoles, we got a client, and then we got a web and mobile console that we can use. The client is what we call a fat client or a thick client, right, that you install in your laptop or your PC and connects to the repository to get all the information in real time and also historical. And then we have the actions like I was talking about earlier. If something crosses a threshold, you can do one of those actions either to inform you or to run some corrective action or some, run some type of action that you want to run. And the last one is the reports. We have over 35 different reports that come with the tool. Uh, you can see those reports in the console. You can also uh, uh, not deploy them, but well, you can deploy them to SSRS so you can share them with other, uh, other people in your organization. And then you can export them to PDF, Excel, and also schedule them to be sent on a regular basis as an email. Okay. Now, the console doesn't have a license itself. So if you license per instance, uh, you can have as many consoles as you want. SSRS is usually nice because you only want to do uh, reports to those audiences that don't need to have a console, but they maybe you want to share information from those uh, reports that you have. Now, we also have in the new version, which is the version 12.2 right now, uh, the web and mobile console. Uh, that is a Fluid website, if you want to call it. So you can see it on the desktop and in Fluids, depending on uh, whether you're using a tablet or a uh, phone, uh, it goes into uh, that type of environment very nicely and it goes into uh, that specific format, that agent that you have for the mobile or tablet. Now, these are some of the metrics. I don't want you to read all of them, but metrics that are specific for each of those environments, Amazon RDS, Azure, and VMware and Hyper-V. So we're gathering extra information in, uh, on top of whatever, everything else that we gather from the SQL side and the operating system. We're gathering information about that em environment that you're running on. And last but not least, I want to talk about the architecture of this product because on the version 12, something new happened. The main, uh, the, the way we used to do it for many years was that that environment would hold about 300 instances. So if you had, let's say, 900 instances, you would have to install one, one, two, three, three of those instances to support 300, 300, and 300. The problem with that is that there were silos, right? You couldn't see uh, servers from this console and vice versa, right? So there were all silos. You would have to connect to this database to see it or disconnect from this one and connect to that one to see all those 300. Well, now we solved that problem with the metadata and we can federate all of that information. And now you can see it from one console, but that console can connect to each of those environments. But now you can go to the custom metadata and see all those 900 and we can scale up to 2000 instances. So that's something Nice to know if you have a lot of instances. Now let's go into the demo. Uh, on the left-hand side, what we have here is views, tags, and servers. Let's start with servers, which is the easiest thing. In the servers, and I click here on the top so you can see it better too, we got five servers, okay? Two of them are in the cloud. Some of them are physical, some of them are, are VMs, virtual machines. Basically, you can see all of the servers. So if you click on one, you can go to the main dashboard. I'm going to talk about that in a second here. Tags. Tags are basically uh, attributes that you apply to a server. I'm not going to go much into this, but if you have a huge environment, not a huge, but 20, 30 instances, maybe you want to tag them by some attributes. So for example, if you want to see all the servers that are in Houston, Ibanez is my main server. Right, that I use. So it's in Houston. You can see it here under the tag of Houston. It's also a production server. So you can see it there under that tag. It's also a virtual server. So you see it under that tag. Now the advantage of this besides separating them logically is that I can right click on it and do some actions. For example, enabling maintenance mode. And what is maintenance mode? Let's say that my three virtual servers, I need to upgrade 
that uh, that host, that VM host. So I can just right click, enable maintenance mode, and that's gonna do what is here in Gibson, right? Which it looks like a moon. It means that he's sleeping. Doesn't mean that the server is sleeping. It means that the the collection of data is sleeping. I'm not collecting any data. I'm not raising any alerts. Why? Because I have to do some upgrades and some maintenance and maybe I have to reboot the system or something like that. Or maybe the CPU is gonna go high during my maintenance and I do not wanna send any alerts. So that's the beauty about TAC that you can do something uh, in uh, one task with many servers. Now, when you go to all servers, you see these squares. This squares is gonna basically represent what's going on with this server very quickly. So you can see here all of them are critical right now, but I can see their names, I can see their versions, I can see their build number. I can also see the response time, user session, CPU, memory, and disk that I have right now. Okay, If I hover my mouse, I can see my top three problems, memory, I got a blocking session, and then the different areas, sessions. Right? Maybe here I can like, take a look at databases that are critical, some data files that are full. Maybe here I can see resources, right? Uh, procedure cache is hitting uh, 93%. Or maybe I can take a look here at services, some services that fail, okay? And I can click on that and go straight to that, or I can double click, which is what I'm gonna do right now, in the server, and I can see the main dashboard. The main dashboard, I'm gonna see the most common indicators, at least the ones that I wanna see. And I can see here CPU, memory, which is in red, which it shows me the memory, the total use, which is that what I have in my virtual machine, right? In this case, is about, I think the maximum is eight gigabytes that I have there. What is allocated for SQL, okay? And then what is being used? As you can see, blue and green are identical. So I'm using 100% of what's allocated. You can see network packs. You can see the disks that I have. I only have one disk, but if you have multiple disks, you can see C, D, E, whatever disk you have. Cache, which is in critical, again, is critical because of my page of expectancy, is critical. And then you have sessions, which is telling me here you know, that I have a blocking uh, condition. We're gonna take a look at that in a second. And last but not least, the databases. And these are by reads, or I can do it by writes, or by whatever I want here. Now, I'm looking at information here from one hour, meaning from here to here is one hour. I can change that if I want to. So if I want to do, let's say, four hours, then it's changing the view to four hours. If I want to zoom into a specific time, I can zoom into that specific time. I want to go back here to one hour again and go back to real time. I can go back to real time and then take a look at that information for the last hour, okay? So now I'm looking at the information for the last hour again. Now, you also have a history browser. The history browser, what allows you to do is say, for example, I want to see what happened on the 24th, which was a Monday. And somebody called me and say at 8 o'clock in the morning or 7, whatever time. Let's say 8 o'clock here, 8.01 or 7.58. My CPU was super high, right? So I click on that 7.58, and I can see everything here, 4.24 at 7.58. So that's April 24th. And I can see everything that was going on at that time. From here, 7.58 or 8 o'clock until 7 o'clock because I'm looking at one hour view. Now, the beauty about this, and I don't necessarily have CPU high here, but I can go, let's say I want to go a little bit because I see maybe here is where the CPU was the highest, right? Let's assume that that was it, right, right here. So now that's at 7.37 a.m. Now, the beauty about this is within the context of time, I can go to another sub menu here, which is called sessions. I'm gonna look at all my sessions here, but I don't want that, I wanna look at the details. And the details is gonna give me a list of all the sessions that were running 7.37 a.m. in the morning on that Monday. Now what I can do here is I can look at all of the sessions that were running. I can sort this, it looks like an Excel table. I can sort it by CPU, let's say. And then on CPU, I can see, I'm, I'm gonna put this actually in a better way that I can see it. I'm gonna do host, CPU, database, and 
see here, application maybe. Okay. Now I can take a look at this and I can see that this session 52, okay, that was coming from this user, that database, that uh, application, which is an agent job, was consuming 135 milliseconds, 1,000 milliseconds. So it's 135 seconds. On the bottom, I can see the detail. 52, it was suspended at that time. It says, Ivan is here, application, database, sales, and that's my command that I was running. So I know immediately what was causing the problem here. Now, if the problem was with physical I.O., then I can see in this case, it is the same one, right? Let's take a look at the other one that was causing problems with I.O. Or maybe I want to do it by memory. Okay. Now, I have all of that information here in that table, which looks like, a, like I said, like an Excel. I can export that to Excel as well. So maybe I can do some formulas or maybe I can do some charts with that information. I can also filter this information. Let's say I want to filter this by, uh, let me do it here, so, sorry, group by box. And then I want to say, I want to do only by application. So now I can collapse everything. Just show me everything that's SQL Diagnostic Manager only. Okay, so now this is the application, SQL Diagnostic Manager. Okay, and maybe if I want to do it by also the status. So now I collapse everything and show me SQL Diagnostic Manager, but everything that's running, which is only one. Okay. So again, this is the beauty of having that historical data. I'm looking at this information in the past. Now, if I want to go to real time, I can click on real time and take a look at all this information now in real time. Okay. Now let's take a look at what some of the problems that we have here. I'm going to hide that information there. Sessions, it says we have a blocking condition. Take a look at that blocking condition and what's going on. So I'm just gonna go here to blocking condition, which is started at 4.28, my time, right? And it's still going pending, right? It's still being blocked. So now I click there, I can see that session 113 is blocking 114. So the top one is blocking the bottom one. I can see this is coming from this database, Adventure Works. This is the wait time, the wait type. Right? It's a lock. The resource, I can open this so I can see it better. I can see the CPU consumption, the physical I.O., the memory, the command. Keep going this way, application, user, and host. So this came from Management Studio. Now, when you take a look here at the bottom, it gives me more information. It's a blocking report. That blocking report serves two purposes. One, it has more detailed information. So if I double click it, you see here 113, 113 is blocking 114 from host, from user, from application, database. And it gives you the command for each of those sessions. Now, the beauty about this, again, this blocking report is that I can take some action. And I can take action here because I am an administrator. I'm going to talk about that in a second. But I can do this action, which is a kill. I'm going to kill that. Okay. And I eliminated that blocking condition. As you can see here, it is already eliminated. Now, when I go here, I still have that blocking report. So what, and I can go back here if I want to see the detailed information again. So this is like a, like a VCR or DVR, right? Uh, like, or a cassette tape, right? I can go back and forward with the, those snapshots. And again, the snapshot that I'm doing here, you can see 503, 501. So I'm doing here the collection every two minutes. You can change that to whatever you want. Now, what happens if, let's say I was on vacation last week and I want to see here all of the blocking conditions Actually, let me do, since we did block, well, let's do blocking so we can talk about it very quickly. All the blocking conditions from the 24th to the 27th. Okay. So now I'm looking at that historical. Let's take a look here at the 26th. I know this started right here because it says race to critical. So at that point, I had a blocking condition. I want to show historical view. So it's going to take me again to 426, April 26th. That was yesterday. And then 
I can see here 112, 113 being blocked. I can move forward like a cassette tape and see everything until basically I got rid of that. And that was probably during my demo. I don't know how long it took to run, but it'll run, it'll run for a long time, right? And I can see it there. Now, I can double click here. And even though I killed that, I'm pretty sure I killed that, right? I still have that blocking report. So I have that as a, uh, there you go. That's when I killed it. So I had that as an evidence of what happened with that blocking report. Now, like I said earlier, I can do that because I am an administrator. So if you go to application security, my user is an administrator. If I had a user that was read only, he could not do that kill. He could only view the data and not make any changes, not add instances, not change thresholds, none of that. And because I'm an administrator and I did that, uh, that activity, it will be logged here. So it says today at 5.20 a.m. in the morning, I killed that session. And it gives me all of the details about that. Okay. Now, let's continue into, look very quickly here, about configuration of the alerts. So we have over, like I said earlier, over 100 different metrics. And these metrics cover from Amazon RDS, if you're running in that environment. And these are specific for that environment, Amazon, Azure, for that environment as well. We have things like for databases, and you can see here that you can enable or disable whatever you want. So if I don't have an availability group, then I don't have to collect that data, right? Database full. So what do I consider a database full percentage? Well, for my default threshold, which is gonna be for my 20 databases that I have in this instance, 80 to 90 is gonna be my threshold. Now I have a database that I want it to be different, sales. And I have done that to 60 and 90. So if I go here and edit, I can go further there and, you know, choose whatever thresholds I want for that database or for my default one, right? So it's up to me how I want to do that. Okay, what is a database status that it would be critical or warning for me? Now here, I'm collecting warning and critical. And if any of these events, right, the values are, for example, if something is offline, it says right now, I have that as a warning. To me, offline, I think it should be critical. So I'm just gonna go and I go on, go on, go on ahead and change that. And then maybe restoring, let's say I don't want that as a warning, I want it as a informational. So now I change the definition of what is critical to me. This all comes already with you know, settings that are the industry standards, but obviously you can change all of that. If logs are getting full, right? And we're gonna talk about log getting full, maybe we can create a, a rule later that can say, if the log is full, do a backup of that log. So basically you can remove all the inactive transactions. So if it's, let's say at 90%, then go ahead and run that action. Okay. Table fragmentation, we can do analysis of uh, fragmentation. So then we can show you if the table is at 35 or more, it would be a warning. If it's 50 or more, it would be red as critical. Contention for the 10 dB, we can measure some of that. Okay. Going on here on resources, many for the disk, average disk milliseconds per read, per transfer, per write, disk reads per second, transfers, and so on. Disk full, and then we have paging, processor, and so on, right? Memory. Let's take a look at two here. Processor time percent, which is going to be your CPU. Now, CPU, I have it at 75 and 90, my thresholds. But I have an additional information here that is called the baseline. So what is a baseline? Let me bring this down a little bit because of my resolution here. But if I can configure the baseline, the baseline is your normal use. So what is the normal use for this server? When is it providing its services, right? Or what are the business hours that you use for the server? In my case, my baseline, my normal use is from Monday to Friday, 8 to 5 p.m. Those, that's when I do my demos. That's when I'm doing my services, right? And that's when I'm working. I'm not doing anything Saturdays and Sundays. And the servers are not doing much at night. 
So I want to make sure how my CPU is running during this time, okay? or my resources. In this case, CPU, so I can see here that I have a baseline of uh, 1.4 to 19 with an average of 6%. So let's say 1 to 15, 6% on average. Now, that tells me that this server is very underutilized. I'm not into any danger zone here that I'm going to go into above that. Now, when I take a look at memory, I can see that my threshold here that I set is at 77 and 82. And I do that on purpose. So you can see here, what is my baseline? My memory, my normal memory, this is where I live, right? It's at 82 to, what did it say here? 94, 90% average, okay? So that means that I'm living here. But my thresholds are here. So what happens when my thresholds are there? You're going to see that the memory is always going to be red. Is that the case? No. Memory is a one of those things that in SQL Server, SQL is going to try to grab as much memory as possible, and it's normal. So maybe what I need to do is here adjust this accordingly, right? So maybe do it a little bit above that threshold so I don't get red all the time. Now, I can do this manually like I did right now. Or I can go here to the top and say, of all the metrics that I have here, which is more than 100, give me those recommendations. Okay. And now I can see here, um, let's say, procedure cache, right? Procedure cache is one of those metrics that the lower it is, the worse. So in this case, this is where I live, right? 7892, that's my baseline. My threshold that. 80 and 65. So yeah, maybe I need to adjust it a little bit under that. So I'm going to click here. I take the recommendation. Or I say, you know what, this is a little too aggressive. Let me put it on 74. Now I'll click OK. I can do that for all of them if I want to. OK, or in this case, I only did one. You can see this icon here. That means that I changed that from the default. And now it is my new setting at 74. So that helps me tune my threshold so I'm not in red and yellow all the time. What we call, I used to call that the Christmas tree effect, right? Where it's a Christmas tree and you see the blinking lights in red, yellow, and green, and everything is blinking and it's just a lot of noise. You want to get rid of the noise so when you see it, you want to take some action. Um, let's go back here on the bottom. Uh, some things that we do as well, we monitor job failures jobs that take longer than 10 minutes or 20 minutes and you can do that by default or this specific job shouldn't take more than five minutes and if it's more than eight it's a critical alert okay then we have things like blocking sessions we, we talked about earlier deadlocks i didn't talk about deadlocks i can talk a little bit about it and then here we have all of the virtualization for vmware and hyper-v before that, let's talk about deadlocks real quick because deadlocks are something that they automatically get resolved, right, by SQL Server. But I can capture the deadlock. Let me see if I had any deadlocks. Yeah, I do have. So I can capture a deadlock, and then I can click on that deadlock, show you the details, and it shows you all of the details. And here, in this line that is pink, basically shows me what was the victim. And I can actually even export that to an XDL file. And I think I have it here under documents. And if I open that deadlock, hopefully it's going to open fast enough for me. But it's going to open uh, Management Studio. So I can send this. As you can see, it's a very small file, 7 kilobyte, uh, kilobytes, I'm sorry. I can send this over email, and then it will open, and it will give me something like this, which is a representation of my deadlock and the victim, right? But you can see all the information here, like uh, the, the owner ID, the transaction descriptor, the object log, the index, right? All of the information that you need, including if I hover the, the statement. So very nice information, even though the deadlock itself, itself, but if you have excessive deadlock, you might want to take a look at that. Now, Let's go back here. Oh, let me close that. Okay. Let's go back here into how to create alerts, which is very, very important here as well. So to create alerts, you can create a rule. And very simple here, 
I usually use this analogy. This is like Outlook, right? In Outlook, when you set an email, you can create rules. So, for example, I can create a rule that if my manager sends me an email after 5 p.m., and that is going to be the person, my manager, and 5 p.m., the time, and that is the conditions, two conditions. If that occurs, then go ahead and do my actions. And the actions might be forward that to my personal email and mark the email as important. Right? So those are two actions that I want to run. Same thing here. So I want to do this, and let's say the example of the log file, right? Um, log full, right? I'm just going to call it log full. That's the name of my rule. What are the conditions? The conditions are going to be only on those two instances, Taylor and Ibanez, okay? I don't want to do the other ones, just those two. Now, we're metrics, and I got to tell the metric. In this case, the metric is going to be log full, right? So I click on that, I look for log full, and it's equal, if I'm not mistaken, uh, or is it log, I forgot now the name. Let's take a look at it. I haven't done it in a while, but I think it is log full. It's not that it's equal log full then. Equal agent log. Oh, I should have done another one. There we go. Okay. Log use. Right, percent. Now, I want to do it as a warning or critical. And that's my threshold that I said earlier. Let's say warning was 80 and critical was 90. So that is already set. If one of those reach that, then I want to do something else. Now, I only want to do this at night. I don't want to do it during the day. So I want to do here only if it happens from, let's say, 10 p.m. until 6 o'clock in the morning. And I want to say seven days a week. Okay. So now those are my conditions. If this happens at 9 p.m., it's not going to do anything. If it happens on another, let's say Gibson, nothing is going to happen either. So you have to meet all of the conditions. Now, I'm going to do the actions. What actions do I want to run? Well, I want to send an email about that. And I already configured my SMTP. I'm going to send here the email address that I want to send it to. Okay. And then here's the message. Now, the message, I can change it if I want to. I'm not going to go that, that deep into it, but I'm going to say the database, right? Is, and I can pass that variable. So you have all these variables available to you. The database is that, or I can say the host, the host, oops, sorry about that. Uh, the host or the server, whatever you want to name it, instance name is in, and then uh, I can say here severity. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Severity. Oh, here we go. Okay. Condition. So that was a critical or warning condition. Right. You can create your own message here. So you can pass any of those variables, including the metric, the value, the alert summary, which is going to be a sentence that's going to give you all of that information. Right. So you can send that as an email. I'm going to say, okay. The next thing that I want to do is I want to run a SQL script. So I'm going to enable here the SQL script. And I'm not going to do this here because I'm not necessarily going to do it, but I'm going to say the description is a backup. And I'm going to say backup. And I'm not going to do a full command, but I'm going to do the variable database, right? And of course, it would be a longer command, but I'm going to say backup in the database. And by doing that, basically, I'm going to do here, let's say, pretend that is a log. So I'm doing the log for that same database, which is going to be the same name as the log. And I'm going to do a backup with the log. By doing that, I can do a, uh, a removal of all the inactive transactions giving me more space in that log, in that transaction log. So that's one example that I can do here, right? I can do many things here, and then I can do other things. I can run a job. I can run a PowerShell script, right? So I can put my command here for PowerShell. I can run a program. So I have a program that deletes all of my older 
log files, right? And is it that bad that I have it on the C drive? So when my disk is full, run this. So it can free up space in my disk. Okay. So many, many things that you can run here as an action. So it's very powerful and very customizable to do this. Now let's take a look at, we have about, uh, let's see, we have about maybe four more minutes here. Let's talk a little bit about queries. And the queries basically, what I'm gonna show you here, uh, let me go into, let me reset this very quickly. Let me go here from the beginning of the month. Now, here what we have right now, it's taking a look at all the queries. Now, I'm looking here at only the queries that are what we call queries that are heavy, right? The worst performing queries. And how do I do that? Well, if I go here and I configure my query monitoring, I'm only going to capture those queries that are taking longer than 2,000 milliseconds or two seconds, okay? We can go into more detail about this. We don't have the time for that, but I'm going to capture SQL batch statements, store procedures, and triggers that takes longer than that. I can do several combinations, and I can go to advanced to filter that even further. But I'm saying everything that takes longer than two seconds, I want to capture that. Now, when I go here and I say from the beginning of the month until today, the 27th, and I'm going to sort it by CPU, I can see everything that was taking a long time, right? And I can do it by average duration. So I can see what was taking the longest, right? And how many times, and I have this here, uh, where is it? Occurrences. Let me move it here so you can see it a little bit better. And occurrences and average duration, right? Oops, sorry, I want to move it here. Now, what is the occurrences? Those are the executions that I have. So for example, it's telling me here that this wait delay, right, or this exec or this begin transaction, right, it ran 24 times during that time frame, or 11 times. Now it's giving me on average how long it took, right, to run, 10 seconds, 64 seconds, 34 seconds, 88 seconds. Now why does it give it to you like this? Let's, let's imagine this was 2,000 times. So it's not the same thing that something that runs, you know, 2,000 times in a week versus something that runs maybe 10 times in a week. Even though they might have the same average duration, I want to pay attention to this one that is running with the most frequency, right? And when I take a look at it, maybe I can go here and take a look at that and show the query. So I can show you the full query for that. So you can see the full query over here. Now we have two views here. We have the signature mode, which is gonna give you this average information, average CPU, and I can put them all together. I don't have them all together right now, but I can put them all together and say, these are my averages, right? Average IO, average weight. But then if I wanna take a look at, okay, what was going on here with this one? Then I can go to the statement mode. In the statement mode, what it's gonna do, is gonna be the same view, but now instead of one line looking at all the executions that I have, I can view them separately. Why? Because it might be different, right? So for example, this begin transaction, one of them took 147 seconds, the other one took 62, the other one took two. Maybe I wanna pay attention to this one, which is 188 seconds. And maybe there's a parameter here that's different than the other ones. And that's why it's causing more duration or more CPU time, okay? So that's why I wanna take a look at those things, okay? So now, when we take a look at query weights, the same thing in query weights, we can take a look at, let me go here in real time. Let me take a look here at the last, uh, let me see if I have it here for the last uh, couple of days. If I don't have it, I might not have this data, it might have been uh, turned off. Let me refresh it here real quick. Let me collect it again, and maybe we can come back to it later. But here, what I'm going to have is basically is going to be all the query waste stats that we have. Okay, and then we can take a look at all those query waste that are going on in that server. And let me see if I have another one. If not, we can jump into another server and then take a look at that information later. Query waste. Ah, oh, I don't have it here either. Okay. 
apologize about that. I don't know if it didn't collect the data for the last week or so, but if not, we can eight hours now. Okay, we can come back later if, if we have to. Oh, there we go. It just took a long time to do it. But let me do it here again for the last five days and see if I can get that. There you go. So what we have here right now is basically the query weights that I had in the last, let's say, from 10 p.m. until now, right? Let's say that's uh, five hours or six hours. So you can see all of that that you had, right? Or actually, this is from the 4, 426 to today. Let's say it's 24 hours. So you can see the weights that I had for that 24-hour period. Now, for that 24-hour period, I can also take a look at this and look at the query weights by duration. Well, now it's doing five weeks, so that's why it was taking a while, but now it's doing five weeks. But now let's say I want to do it by duration. Now, during that, let's say 24 hours, what was my duration of my locks, my write locks, okay? My CX packet, memory allocation. Okay, so let's see here, what was costing memory allocation? About one, uh, 1,300 or 1,400, so one, one second. I can go there, click on it, and then that will give me information of all the queries that were running during that time. Okay, and I can see in milliseconds how much it was taking. I can take a look at the, at the uh, text, the full text. Where is that coming from, that insert? That's coming from that agent job. That's the application, the database sales, the client, Ibanez, sessions. And finally, I can say, what user is that coming from? So it allows me to drill down to the root cause of the problem. Okay. And we have about two minutes. I want to cover something very quick in those two minutes. One minute, I want to talk about the analyze. So we have an, an, an analysis that we can do on many different areas in your server. And you can run this analysis for 10, 20, 30 minutes. What it does is going to give you a report later of all the things that it found, and it's going to give you some recommendations. We call this a prescriptive analysis. So for example, it's going to say, hey, you haven't run a DBCC check DB in this database in this number of days. You, sorry, you have a backup here on this database that is on the same volume as you have your data file. So it's giving you a recommendation that obviously you gotta put that in different disks, okay? You have recommendations about locks in page in memory, right? And it gives you a recommendation. Some of the recommendations, they actually give you an optimized script. For example, here it says the dead log information is not being captured. So it's giving you the script to run and automatically fix that into in that instance, okay? And the last thing that I wanted to talk about is the reports. Over 35 different reports, where I can take a look at one report, for example, top queries. And I can say here, Ibanez uh, for the last seven days and give me the top three queries, which is gonna give me the top three queries by frequency, by CPU, by memory, and so on. Now, I know uh, it's about 5.44 right now my time. Uh, 45 minutes after the hour. So I want to make sure that there are no questions or if there's any question right now uh, that I can answer those in the time allocated. In in the meantime, while we look at those questions here, you can see the top frequencies, the top three, right, by count, the average duration, the top three by CPU, the top three by reads, and the top three by writes. I can export this to PDF, Excel, Word, and I can also send that to reporting services, and then I can also set it, send it as an email. So basically, if I want to schedule that to be delivered every Friday to my inbox, I can do that as well. Any any questions uh, that we have from your side? Well, uh, thanks, Ray. That's a great presentation. I do believe we have also our product manager, David, with us uh, from AlphaSoft. Um, 
maybe David, could you say a couple of words and if there are any questions? Hi, Finn. Yes, um, I'll be glad to. Uh, as Finn said, I'm the product manager for, for Idea Tools. I'll be more than happy to help you out. So if there are any questions moving forward, uh, please contact me or uh, email alphasoft, uh, info.alphasoft and I'll be able to assist. So I want to begin with saying thank you, Ray, for a great presentation and of course for getting up so out of bed so early to help us out with this presentation. Before we start the Q&A, I do have a couple of questions. I also want to clarify that Adira doesn't only offer diagnostic manager, but that this is tool is one out of many Adira tools that help organizations manage their IT environments with, more efficiently. If you want to learn more about the Adira portfolio, please go to alphasoft.com. Under products, you'll find a segment called database tools where you, where you will learn more about the Adira offerings. So with that said, uh, I do have a couple of questions. I think, Ray, you did touch base on, on, uh, on these, but I'll still uh, read them up for you to, to answer. So the first one is, what are the top features that make Idera Diagnostic Manager unique and how do they help with database monitoring performance optimization? So more or less, what makes Diagnostic Manager unique? Yes, great question. What makes uh, Diagnostic Manager unique? In, I mean, there's many things that we do well. First of all, we've been doing this for uh, almost more than 15 years, right? And in the beginning, we were only SQL Server. Now we have grown to do all the databases as well. But at the beginning, the first probably 10, 12 years, it was only SQL Server. So we put a lot of focus into this type of uh, database. Uh, now, what makes it unique? The history that we keep all of this information, right? So that is a, the, one of the beauty, the beauties of the product, that not only we capture all of this information, but then you can see it in a history format. So at any at any point, you can go back and take a look at that history information, go back to the calendar, and see exactly what was going on in that specific time. Like I said, it's almost like a DVR here in the United States. We call it DVR or cassette tape, right? I can go to the specific point in time where I was having a problem and then look at all of the information from that historical point and take a look at what was going on. What was going on with my CPU, with my memory, with my sessions, with my weights. All of that information in historical is great. The other one that is very, very robust, and I've been working with monitoring uh, software for many, many years, it is the fact that, that we do the alerting so well and so customizable. So for example, you saw the alerts that I can say specifically which uh, instances do I want? At what time do I want to send those, uh, those alerts, right? Uh, what specific criteria do I have for sending that alert as far as it, whether it's going to be a ranking of the metrics, it could be, which I didn't talk about that, but also it could be the thresholds, right? Whether it's warning or critical. Um, whether it goes over the baseline. I didn't talk about that either. So the baseline, again, is your normal use. What if it goes above like 20% above your baseline, right? So now we're talking about what's normal because I have that information that what is normal. And all of a sudden it says, okay, now it went above that, that baseline, right? What is normal, 10%. So those are great things to have in this product that allows you to be more and more proactive and to have a better sense of what's going on with your systems. The other one that I talked about at the end is the analyze part. The analyze part, if you run it, let's say daily or every week or whatever, then you can start fine tuning your and optimizing your instances and your databases. It's gonna give you information about what might be going on, what might, might be going on in your server, right? Um, doesn't mean that you have to take every recommendation, but you can take some, some of those recommendations and fine tune your system so it can run more efficient and effective, right? And that is another thing that we uh, give you with your tool, right? That is, it's a, it's a wonderful thing. Also the queries, and again, the queries that you can view and filter by date, right? So for example, I can go here again, let me go here and reset it. I'm sorry. I can go here again and say, I just want to see it from the beginning of the month 
uh, and I only want to see the information from 8 a.m. until, uh, let's say, 12 p.m., right? So I'm going to do change that to A. So now it's going to load everything that happened from the beginning of the month until now from 8 to, to 12 p.m., right? And it's going to load that information only for that time, the time that you maybe work, uh, you know, from 8 to uh, lunchtime or something like that. Right. So, again, it gives you very good information about what's going on for your queries, uh, resources. I mean, databases, that is all really nice to have as well. So all the information about the capacity of your databases. Um, in a nutshell, I mean, that's that's my my essence here. But the one thing that I like the most, it is the history. Any other questions? <laughs> Thank you. That was a great answer, Ray. Uh, I do actually think we have time for one more question. Um, how does Idera Diagnostic Manager gather, gather performance metrics and diagnose issues in SQL Server databases? And what mechanisms does it use to communicate this information to users? Yep, that's a great question. So let's take how we gather the data. So we gather a lot of the data if it's if it's operating system, like I said earlier. We gather the data in a different way, right? Or it's metrics. Very simple, we do WMI. If you don't have WMI enabled, or for whatever reason, your security doesn't allow you to do that, then we can capture that through all the automation, which you would have to enable in the SQL Server and gather the information for the OS, which is gonna be your CPU memory and disk. Now, for all the things, we capture things in different ways, right? Most likely, you need to have a user that has this admin to capture all this information with that user. Now, we use different mechanisms from uh, SQL Server to elevate this and gather that information. But for example, the activity monitor, which is gonna be your deadlocks, your auto growth, and your blocking, we capture that uh, via either extended events or doing a SQL trace. The query monitor, the worst performing queries, how do we capture that? We can capture that either by a trace, by an extended event, if you have the, the right version, right, 2008 and above. And if you have the right version also, 2016 and above, you can do the query store, right? So we can use different data to gather that information depending on what you prefer, what you think is better, or what you have enabled or not enabled and things like that, right? Uh, for example, we got the activity monitor with the weight monitoring, the same thing. We can capture that with a with a query store or do it with the extended events, right? So you have different ways of capturing the data. Uh, for the most part, you need sysadmin. Uh, we have a white paper that talks about that if you don't want to use sysadmin, then basically we can give you information about what are the things that you're going to lose if you don't have sysadmin, and what are the specific permissions that you need to give uh, in order to gather that. And in order to communicate, again, with uh, other tools, we usually use email. Uh, in the next version, we're going to have uh, things that, for example, ServiceNow integration that goes through a PowerShell and can I can send a ticket, open a ticket into ServiceNow. Uh, but for the most part, we use integrations like email, SMTP, SNMP, which is going to be a network messaging broadcast. Uh, and it could be other ones like... Um, uh, like you can run, uh, not the SNMP, I was thinking, uh, or you can run any script, you know, that you want to run. And then you have different ways that you can uh, basically run things or do corrective actions, right? So those are the ways where we can communicate with other other tools. Uh, but the only one that we're going to have right now, an integration, is going to be with either SCOM, Microsoft SCOM, or uh, in the future, in the next version, is going to be a service now to open tickets automatically. 